Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart and in this lesson we're going over Science Book 4, Lesson 3, Animal Adaptations. So we will discover how animals change over time and how one bird hides in nature. As usual, we start with the vocabulary. Our first word today is ant eater. This is actually two words, as you can see. Ant, right? Little, uh, I think you say gamey in Korean, little, little ants running around. And then eater. So it's an interesting word. Something that eats ants, okay? So ant eater is an animal that has a long nose and eats ants. And this is a good picture of an ant eater. It's a really strange looking animal, isn't it? But it's a very uh, unique and amazing animal, as all animals are actually. Okay, let's move on. Tongue. Tongue, of course, is the soft movable part in your mouth. I would show you mine, but it seems a little rude to stick your tongue out at another person. So don't do that. <laughs> We can see a picture of a frog. A frog has a very famous tongue and a very interesting tongue. We can see the tongue of the frog here. Well, look at how long that is. And the, the frog can flick, can flick its tongue out or throw its tongue out at an insect far away from the frog and catch it because the tongue is sticky. So the frog uses its tongue to catch its food, insects. Very interesting. Underground. Underground. Of course, we live above ground. We don't usually say above ground because that's normal for us. But if we go under the ground, that's a little odd. So we say underground. And again, we have another word that has two words. Of course, we call these types of words compound words. Compound words, because compound is when you take two or more things and you join them together to make one thing. And we've joined two words, under and ground, to make one word, and that means, of course, below the ground. If you use the subway in your city, you travel underground, unless your subway comes up sometimes above ground, but usually the subway, sub means under, way is path, subway is another compound word, but subway would be under the ground, right? Usually under the ground. And many animals, of course, live underground. Ants, worms, looks like a caterpillar or some kind of grub, and then, um, looks like a mole, uh, and other animals will live underground. They make their homes in the ground, underground. Okay, spray. To spray is to blow liquid into the air. And of course, mom uses something, or dad, of course, uh, will use a cleaner, you know, and it sprays. You, you uh, have a little trigger here. You push the trigger, and it sprays the cleaning liquid onto the glass or the kitchen countertop or something like that. Be careful also because um, when you speak, you also spray your spit from your mouth. And that's why it's a good idea to wear a mask when people are worried about catching diseases, right? So spray is just uh, to blow liquid into the air, whether it's normally through your mouth while you're talking or through a, a spray bottle when you're cleaning something, but to spray. Okay. Adapt. Adapt means to change. To change in order to be successful in a new situation. So let's say you change schools. Your family moves from one city to another. Or even better, your family moves from one country to another. Oh, that's a better example because when you move to the new country, maybe they're speaking a new language. They have different customs. They have uh, different ways to dress, diff maybe different clothes. You have to change uh, your behavior, your speech, and the way that you act probably to adapt to the new situation, the new environment in which you live. And animals, living creatures, do this all the time because the environment is always changing around us. So we adapt to our environment. 
adapt, to change, and of course we want to be successful. If we don't change, we won't be successful, right? Some people say change or die. Okay, that's, that's a natural law, right? Uh, so if uh, living creatures don't change, many of them will die. They have to change to be successful in their new environment. Next we have, oh, is a big word, a little bit difficult, right? Wow, how do you pronounce that? Camouflage, camouflage. Camouflage is an interesting word. It's an interesting idea too. Take a look at this picture. It's an interesting lizard, right? Looks like an iguana. But um, some lizards and some frogs and other animals also will be able to change their color and, you know, change their color. I don't mean like over a long period of time. I mean right away. Like uh, this type of lizard, frogs can do this. Octopus, if you ever see an octopus underwater, they're amazing. The color is, you know, uh, like pulsing on their skin as you watch them and they're blending in. Camouflage is basically an animal's color or sometimes the shape of the animal also makes it hard to see it in nature. It's hard to see this lizard because it can change the color of its skin to the same color of the tree on which it sits. Frogs can do this too, some frogs, and like I said, octopus. If you ever look at an octopus moving over a coral reef, you know, the coral reef has many different colors, and the octopus changes so it matches the colors as it moves over the reef. It's really amazing. So that is camouflage. Sometimes people will wear camouflage, right? They'll wear a, a, a jacket or pants that have the, the black and the green uh, pattern on it. And th that's also what we call camouflage too, because if they go in the forest, it would be hard to see them because they're wearing black and green clothes, right? So that's camouflage. And we have a video showing camouflage. Look at this picture. I'll start the video. Can you see the creature? It's like playing Where's Waldo? Where's, the, oh wait, oh there it is. It's a butterfly. Of course when it opens its wings, right, we can see it easily because then it's not camouflaged. But when it closes its wings, it's a little difficult to see because it looks uh, like part of the tree bark. So that's a type of camouflage. Next word is skunk. A skunk is an animal that looks like this. It's usually black and uh, with white fur, black and white fur on it. And uh, you have to be careful around skunks. Joseph, uh, be careful. Uh, a skunk is a black and white animal that can make a bad smell. Actually, the skunk can spray. Uh, how can they make the bad smell? In their tail, they have these little um, ducks and they can shoot. They can spray this really bad smelling uh, liquid at people or animals, usually animals that try to catch them. Of course, a skunk isn't a very strong animal, and you know, if a dog or a wolf or a coyote or even a bear tries to eat the skunk, the skunk just turns around, raises its tail, and makes a, a shoots a spray at the animal, and the animals, you know, most many animals uh, are very um, sensitive with their nose. They can smell a lot uh, better than we can, so their sense of smell is very strong. And when the skunk hits the uh, the animal, especially the nose, with that spray, the animal's like, "Whoa, I, no! I don't want to deal with this animal. This animal smells really bad." So then they run away, and the skunk survives. So that's kind of an interesting uh, way that the skunk uses uh, to survive, to stay alive. Okay, that's our vocabulary for this lesson. So let's take a look at a lot of different examples of animal adaptations. Remember before we talked about adapt, that's the verb. If we want to make it into a noun, we say adaptation. Adaptation is a change. And we can see many different animals here. We have four different animals uh, that have all adapted to their environment. And actually, of course, every animal that you see, and I'm including us too, us human beings, we have all changed over millions of years to suit our environment, to be successful in our environment. And it's interesting too, because you look at all of these animals, they all have the same body type. They all have a vertebrae, a spine, a backbone, two arms, two legs, two ears, two eyes, and a nose, every animal. But 
because they all have the same ancestor. So over time, right, different families or different uh, 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 individuals of these species may have adapted or changed differently to their environment and they become new animals. They all have the same body parts, but some body parts might be longer or shorter or different colors and, and do different things than other animals. And that's just uh, adaptation over time. So these are examples of animal adaptations. And how do animals change to be successful in their environments? Well, first we can see the first animal here. That is, what is that? That is a giraffe, right? A giraffe, of course, is famous for its really long neck. Why does it have a long neck? Because it can eat the leaves high up in the trees, right? If there's a certain amount of food in the, uh, in the environment, usually a lot of animals that eat plants, they're eating the grass and the leaves that are low to the ground. But giraffes, because of their long neck, they can reach up in the trees, other animals can't get there. So the giraffes don't have to worry about fighting with other animals to eat the plants on the ground. They've got, all the, they've got all the food they want up in the trees and it's all theirs. So that's one way that giraffes have adapted to their environment. We talked about an anteater in our vocabulary section. Here we have an anteater. Of course, look at that mouth on that anteater, right? His eyes are up here, right? His eyes are up here. Look at that. No, no, is that right? No, I'm sorry. Those are his ears, his eyes right there, right? His ears, but look at that. Look at that mouth. That's huge, right? That's a really long nose and, of course, mouth and tongue. His tongue is also very long because he can stick that tongue into the ant hole and get the ant that are underground. Poor ants. They're like, they're just going about their business in their home. Along comes this big, long, sticky tongue and sucks them all up. <laughs> okay. So an anteater, of course, they don't have to worry again about uh, competing with other animals because they have adapted specifically to eat ants underground. And no other animal can do that. So that's a very successful technique that anteaters have developed. Next, we have a frog, and I've talked about the frog's tongue, right? The frog is very, interest, is very unique in being able to throw its tongue at insects and catch them. And the tongue is very fast. You can't, uh, you can't really see it with your eye. You have to take like slow motion photography to see the frog's tongue come out of its mouth and grab that insect. It's, it's really amazing. So a long tongue to help get food. So frogs will use their tongues to help them eat, capture food. And of course, I talked about the skunk. The skunk is unique because it has a bad smelling liquid that it sprays to keep safe from other animals. So as you can see, all of these animals are unique and, and amazingly so in their own way. They've all changed to help them survive in their environment. And that's basically evolution. Okay, next idea. Another example of evolution or changing to adapt to your circumstances is camouflage. And that was one of our words in um, the vocabulary section. So an example of camouflage. <gasps> what is this animal? Ptarmigan? <laughs> How do you pronounce that? Why do they do that? Well, actually, when you pronounce this word, the P is silent. So it's ptarmigan, uh, ptarmigan. Uh, it's a bird. It's similar, probably. There's many wild birds. Of, of course, many wild birds are wild, but it's not like a chicken. It's a wild bird. It's not a domesticated bird. It lives in the wild. And like many animals, uh, rabbits, for example, uh, different types of uh, mammals will change the color. Of, in this case, of course, a bird has feathers, but other animals might change the color of their fur. I'm thinking about rabbits, especially uh, rabbits that live in, in very cold or snowy environments or climates. They can change their color to match the season. And that's exactly what's going on here with the ptarmigan. In the summer, the ptarmigan has brown feathers so that it looks similar to the rocks of the brown ground where it runs around, so it's hard to see it. In the fall, the ptarmigan's feathers begin to turn white. Why? Because winter is coming, and with winter, snow. And of course, snow is white. So by the time winter comes around, the ptarmigan's feathers are all white, and it blends with the snow. So it's hard to see the ptarmigan in the snow. 
And that's a good, another good example of camouflage. Okay, let's do the reading. As usual, I will read out loud. Read along with me, practice pronunciation, or read along silently in your mind, but focus on the words, especially from the vocabulary, and focus on how to pronounce some of the more difficult words. Are you guys ready? Let's begin. Over a long time, animal bodies have adapted to their habitats. These changes are called adaptations. Adaptations can help an animal get food. Giraffes have long necks. Giraffes depend on this adaptation to eat leaves high up in trees. Ant eaters have very long tongues. They eat ants that live underground. Ant eaters use their long tongues to get the ants. Frogs also have long tongues. Their long tongues help them to get food. An adaptation can help an animal be safe. A skunk can spray a liquid that smells very bad. Skunks depend on this liquid to keep them safe from other animals. Some animals eat other animals. Many animals have camouflage. They look like objects around them. It is difficult to see an animal with camouflage. Camouflage helps keep the animals safe from other animals. Okay. How is this reading organized? How is the information in this reading organized? Well, over on the left side, we have causes. On the right side, we have effect. On the left side, the causes are basically the adaptations that these animals have. And the effect or the result is how does it help them live or be successful in their environment? So let's take a look. Over on the left side, the first one, we have giraffes have long what? Remember what giraffes are famous for? They have long necks. Necks. N-E-C-K and S. We have to use S because giraffes is plural, so necks should be plural. That's proper grammar. We wouldn't say giraffes have long neck. That doesn't make sense. That's not proper grammatically. They, they, don't, don't have, they don't all have the same neck. They have many different necks. So giraffes have long necks. Remember, plural, plural. Good. What is the result of that? If a giraffe has a long neck, what is the result? The result is they can eat leaves from the top of a tree. And so giraffes don't have to worry about competing with other animals. They can just eat the leaves off the top of the tree. And they're happy. <laughs> so they don't have to worry. Okay, next we have anteaters have long what? And we talked about this. They have a really long mouth because they have a really long tongue that they can stick out. So they have long tongues. And again, tongues, we have to put, oops, sorry. We have to put S, right? Ant eaters, S, tongues, S. So ant eaters have long tongues. What, what's the effect of that? They can eat ants, they can eat ants that live underground. They can stick their tongue underground and get those ants. <laughs> Delicious. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Not for us, but for anteaters. Yes. Okay. Good. So next, last, we have frogs have what? What do frogs have? Well, we could say tongues because we talked about that. But wait a minute. The next sentence is related to this. They look like objects near them. So tongues wouldn't be a proper fit here because tongues don't help frogs look like the objects around them. What does? Remember that really difficult word we saw in the vocabularies? It was quite long. It's also difficult to spell. But remember, it, le it lets them uh, look like their surrounding. And other animals we talked about, I talked about octopus, right? And in the uh, example, we saw the uh, ptarmigan, the bird that changes feathers, um, the color of its feathers over time. What do we call that? We call that camouflage. 
So, C-A-M-O-U-F-L-A-G-E, camouflage. Camouflage. And because of camouflage, they are hard to see. This keeps them safe from other animals because, you know, animals that might eat those uh, frogs or, or birds or octopi, octopuses, uh, can't see them very well. It's like, where are they? I can't see them. So they won't eat them. Whew. Okay, so camouflage keeps them safe from other animals. Okay, very good. Interesting lesson. We talked about different animals, how they have changed. And remember, all animals, every animal that you can see, and most animals that have died in the past, they all have changed to be successful with the environment. Animals that don't change, or, or if the environment changes very quickly, then the animals don't have time to adapt, they will die. And a lot of life has died on Earth in the past. But a lot of life continues to live. And if you look around, the biological world out there is very amazing. There's a lot of really interesting, unique, amazing animals out there. So next time you go to the zoo or you take a walk through the forest or the mountain near where you live, take a look around. Look at the animals, the insects, the birds. Think about how did they change to fit their environment. You can also think about how did you change to adapt your environment. Okay, adapt to your environment. Okay, well, thanks for uh, studying with me as usual. Hope you learned a lot of interesting words and also some interesting ideas about nature. Take care, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye, everybody.